Welcome back. It's almost the end. I met Kona. I am Yael Shelley Gavish. Did I say I'm? I said hi. Introduced you. This is Matt Kona. You said I'm Matt Kona. No, I said hi, Matt Kona. Oh. You can listen to our podcast. I thought you were being facetious. No, that's your thing. You did it last season. Yeah, we're recapping trucks. Thank you, Matt. You're welcome. What uh, interesting experience. Well, we watched... Um, so I wasn't sure about what this movie was about. How did um, you put it just in front of your face? I had a feeling that the movie was about trucks. Um, so You're a boy, so you like trucks. That's what boys like, no? Stephen King wrote um, and directed a movie in the 80s called Maximum Overdrive. Which I just checked on IMDb, because I like. And it, the rating like. for this one, I like... It's 5.5. Can you guess the rate, the rating for the movie? Maximum that Overdrive? Saw? Maximum Overdrive was 5.5. Really? Yeah. Can you guess how much trucks got? 7.7. Uh, 7. Of course, 10 out of 3. 3.9. Really? People yes. thought this was worse than Maximum Overdrive? I didn't watch Maximum Overdrive, but it's under the category of comedy. So. Well, yeah. I mean, it, Maximum this Overdrive... This one was... Maximum Overdrive know. is a movie that is uh, sort of so bad that it's good. <laughs> but um, I guess this is played a little bit more straight up. So This, I, this one wasn't that bad to be good. I it was just the, that bad. Yeah. Well, I thought the Maximum Overdrive was just something that Stephen... Because he directed the movie, too, and wrote it, of course. So I thought that he just did it in, like, a wild cocaine frenzy because that was during his... Uh, now I want to watch it. ...not very sober period. And uh, it's really... I mean, it is funny. Emilio Estevez is in it, and Stephen King plays like a tourist who I think gets killed by an arcade game that comes to life because in Maximum Overdrive all of technology just comes to life and uh, mostly there's Mack trucks that are circling this shitty gas station. Also it was 10 years earlier, right? Something like that. Yeah, um, I mean, yeah, I think so. I think it was uh, maybe 1988. I feel like it was earlier than 1988. <laughs> I was just there. Let's see. I didn't see it when it came out, of course. But um, I didn't know until I looked up the Wikipedia. 86. Okay, yeah, 86, 12 years before. And then tracks came out in 97, so. 97? Okay. That's yeah, more than 10 years. Um, so, yeah, technology has changed. And also movies yeah. has changed. But too. this is based on a short story of his that he wrote for Night Shift. And I like Stephen King, but I don't, I'm not like a huge fan of all of the short stories. I, those are the collections, or those are the books that I have least enjoyed, I think, perhaps. Uh, I mean, there's been some exceptions, there's been some good ones. Which like, one was your favorite shorts? Uh, there was one, I think it was called... The beach or the float or something. I remember that being pretty good, but I don't remember anything about it. I enjoyed the. Uh, right and I after liked Quitters Inc. What? Quitters Inc. was a short story of his. Oh, you like like specific? No, but I'm saying like what collection of shorts you like? Um, you like an encyclopedia of Stephen King? No. How do you say encyclopedia? Encyclopedia. Encyclopedia. Yeah. I don't think I'm an encyclopedia about Stephen King. My friend Kevin Quigley is like yeah. an expert in Stephen King. He's really yeah, but I mean, for other regular for, people, for a casual you're fan. pretty, like, I don't know. You, It's not only that you know all the books, you also read all of them, so. Yeah, I didn't read them all. I didn't finish The Stand. I didn't finish Gerald's Game. I never read Christine. It, but I have read a lot of. I mean, he's books. my favorite author, and considering 
the fact that they don't like reading at all. So, good job, Steven. <laughs> you did something that millions of others didn't. Yeah. I mean, just don't, I don't know, I'm like, the last one that I started is Needful Thing is right here under the table. Needful Things is real good. And I stopped on the same day. I mean, it's still here waiting for me. And <laughs> it's one day it will happen. It took me three years, I think, to finish The Langoliers, which is a short story. <laughs> it's a novella, yeah. And I, but my favorite collection, and it's one of my favorite books, like I, I read it twice in Hebrew, the Right After Sunset. Right? right just after, after sunset. Just after sunset. Sipo well, that's Imagine. not a short story. It's, that's uh, novellas. What are the differences? Novellas are much longer. Sometimes short stories are like 10 pages long. Yeah, but that's what was in Just After Sunset. Mm, I'm pretty sure Just After Sunset had some long ones in there. No. The Langolier is... All right, well... Uh, Long, but... This one were, like, pretty short. That's why I enjoyed it, because I was, like... I'm I'm very impatient person. I need to work on it. But <laughs> I thought that Just After Sunset had a story in no, it. No, like, 20 was, like, stories in there or something. Really? Yeah, there are, like, many stories, and it's not that thick, and I enjoyed it, because it got right into the point very fast, and that's why I liked reading it so much, so I read it twice. <laughs> I'm one of those people right. that, like, once once I like something, like, if I like a movie, I would just keep watching this movie for, like, years now. And how many stories? Um, looking at the Wikipedia. What movie did you watch the most amount of times? Oh, yeah, I guess there's a decent amount of stories in here. Yeah, there are many stories in there. My favorite, I liked the... The first one, what's the name of oh, it? Oh, there's 13. I like the one on the... Willa? Wait, Willa. Willa was great. It's from a Playboy magazine. Why? And I like the one on the OCD, which was super, 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 N. super... Yeah. Yeah. That was super... That's, I think, one of the stories that I read that, like, really... It was so disturbing. And I, I have, like, OCD. Not that bad. <laughs> Don't tell it to the army. That's why they let me go. But, <laughs> but, but that was like creeped me from. E oh my god! It just like I have no idea why and how. But what did you think about that book? I liked that story. It. N? That story and yeah. Yeah, I, I liked N. It was so. I don't know. I wanted to itch my insides when I was reading it. <laughs> and I like the one with the bicycle. So Night Shift had 21, so I'm saying that one had a lot more Ooh, so maybe I should it. read this one. Maybe I would yeah. like this one even better. Well, I mean, if you have a hard time finishing something that's long. <laughs> that's, yeah. I mean, that's my problem. I'm very impatient. I'm, I need to get to the point right away. I'm, and I'm realizing it about myself recently more and more, especially as a pole dance coach, that I'm trying to do something. And now sometimes I really have to get something done because one of my students wants to do something and I'm... I have to realize how to do something and I need to spend more than like two seconds and like, oh, I can't. Okay, I'll do something else. And I'm, like, <laughs> I'm just impatient. That's And I'm also very impulsive and I need things right here, right now, right away. So it's hard. Uh, Stephen King has pretty long books sometimes. All right. I did read it. You did. That's a long It was the one. longest book I've ever read. I think it's like the same length as all the books I've ever read. All right, so, so I just doubled all of my <laughs> pages. <laughs> well, first of all, the reason I chose this movie was because uh, I thought I didn't. We're know. running out of movies. No, no, it's the well, third year that we're doing that. No, I well, I wanted to watch a Stephen King movie that I'd never seen before. If I had known this was a uh, a redo of Maximum Overdrive, I wouldn't have chosen it, but. Uh, I thought so. There's a another story that I liked that was written by Stephen King and his son Joe Hill called Full Throttle, which is about which is something that they even can't pronounce. Her frottle. <laughs> full throttle. Full <laughs> throttle. Wait, is what is it? Full. Full. F U L L. Throttle. T 
T-H-R-O-T-T-L-E. Throttle? Yeah, you call like you give it gas, give it some throttle. Throttle. Yeah. Full throttle. Oh my God, this is the most annoying word I've ever heard in English. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it's about throttle. a biker gang <laughs> that is terrorized by a semi-truck in the middle of the American desert. And I thought that's what this movie was about. I didn't real. I don't remember what year that it came out in. Apparently, the book came out in two thousand nine. The book, the movie came out in nineteen ninety eight. Wow, you're I don't know. So it was close. it was called Trucks. It, there's no way in hell I would think that Maximum Overdrive. Oh, there would was have a truck in Pet Cemetery. I didn't think that it's about that too. Yeah, I thought it was about the guy driving on his <laughs> his regular route all the way up there. <laughs> Um, what happened to the truck driver after he killed the kid? He probably I said the kid. Right. I wanted to say the boy, but then it was like in the second one, there was a girl. So <laughs> Yeah. We learned so much this season. Yeah, so let's go to the sheets. Sheets. What did you say? How did you judge by the cover? Uh, 18 wheels, six feet deep. What? It just said, it, all you see was a truck what, with a what skeleton did, no, what did driving you say? it. I said 18 wheels, six feet deep. Meaning, you bury someone six feet deep, and a truck has 18 wheels. You call it an 18 wheeler. Oh, really? I didn't yeah, know that. That's that, why I was like, what are you talking about? There's not that much for me to react to about the cover. It looked very cheesy. I did. Terminator never looked that dumb before. Yeah, it does look like a T-1000 driving a big rig. Yeah. I guess that there would be eight deaths. I said six. Oh, you were closer. Yeah. There were ten that I counted. Yeah. And first kill? Uh, 23 minutes and 30 seconds. I said six, so I was closer. Right. Was it happened pretty close in the minutes beginning. Minutes and 50 seconds. Yeah. An old-style junkyard truck backed into... Kill an old man. That was the first death. Yeah, with Stephen King stories, you usually guess like a, a low number, like a low minute. How do you say that? Early in the movie. Early in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because usually there's like something, like what did you watch last year? Wolves, something. Oh, uh, Silver Bullet. Yeah. It's also happened the same thing. Someone died right away. Yeah, something like oh, you out of nowhere. Like, werewolf. There were yeah. no werewolves in this movie. No. What did you say about sex? I said there would not be sex. Me too, and we're both wrong. There was a little bit. A little bit of sex. Yeah. <laughs> Just a little bit. Just of a little <laughs> bit of yuppie sex, right? There yeah, was the nothing very sexy. Yeah. Um, Bleak ending. Well, I said there a rabbit would die. In Bleak Ending? That's a weird answer. Uh, uh, I said yes. <laughs> Me too. Bleak were you bright? It was super bleak. Yeah. An animal, I said... I said rabbit. I said a deer. A male deer. Oh, not a female deer. <laughs> no. It's too obvious. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this was like... If Maximum Overdrive was very silly and over the top, this was played a little bit, a lot bit, serious. Like, apparently this was like a, a made-for-TV movie, but it was like an American and Canadian production. So I don't remember if there was swearing in it. Perhaps there wasn't. But um, it centers around a small town called Lunar, that is near Area 51, which is, do you know Area 51? Where is it? It's I mean, New I know. Mexico. New Mexico. Yeah, it's supposed to be. Yeah, it's where the aliens are. Rumored testing site for uh, captured UFOs that is. There's a Will Smith movie there, no? Uh, Men in Black? No. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I think so. Ba the Legend of Bagger Vance. I don't know. Six Degrees of Separation. Independence Day. That no. has to do with aliens. I don't, I don't know. I don't know if they're... I don't know. No, something... There's a lot of Will, movie, Will Smith movies that I have not seen, so I'm not sure. Could be. 
Yeah, I don't remember much of the movie. I just remember something about... Maybe they mentioned it in Men in Black. I don't remember. Yeah, probably. I mean, that movie is about aliens and protecting the public knowledge of the existence No, but for some aliens. reason, I have Will Smith and Area 51 together. I don't know why. All right. Well, I don't know what that reason is, <laughs> and neither do you. If you're listening or watching and you know what I'm talking about, Please help me out. Yeah, leave a comment. Solve this. Mi- solve the mystery of Area Fifty One. Yeah. Will Smith, if you're listening, uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're cool. Yeah. Um. So, this also this movie also shifted who you thought was going to be the main character. Uh, there's a girl. She's a tour guide. And uh, did I not even write down her name? Hope. Her name is Hope. Yeah. yeah. And so she works as a tour guide. He, she brings people. Are you in. proud of me? I usually don't remember. That. That's good. No, I didn't even. Thank you. I didn't write her name down. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I wrote down. I think. I think that things. like Hope is a name that I'm like. I don't know. Just weird name. It's a beautiful name, but it's just like. Not that common, and I think it's just differently pretty. I think it's so too much remember. pressure to have a, to <laughs> straddle a child with the there name is Hope. A, there is hope in Hebrew too. Tikva. This is my hope. Tikva. It's an old lady name. I mean, if you're young and your name is Tikva, it's probably your middle name. Yeah. But. Well, I don't know. I think more elderly esque names should be brought back. No. Tikva. Nope. <laughs> uh, so Hope is a tour guide, and she's going to take some people around the uh, the town, which is sort of like a lot of these middle of the nowhere small towns in the desert. Sort of made money off of the tourists who are curious about Area Fifty One. So if they can get uh, specific stories told about them of what happened then they're uh, more interested in spending money in the town and staying there at the hotels and shopping at the stores and eating at the restaurants and things. So they're making up stories. <laughs> yeah, there's probably a lot of exaggeration. I mean, it's sort of the same way that the Salem tours that we've taken yeah. are, are like that too, you know. There's there's facts and there's conjectures and then it's just like a big game of telephone. But th- she was driving a regular van. It wasn't a trolley. Right, yeah, yeah, more personal. So she was going to pick up a couple people in the nearest town, and then some people were going to meet her there. And uh, I don't, it's tough to say what the relationship is with this guy Ray and his son Logan. I don't Logan. know, many things they run in a that gas movie station. were like, this is just what small is town going people. on here, yeah. Small town people that they see every day, and... One of them is the guy who runs like a gas station slash slash little diner. No, but restaurant. seriously, I'm thinking about like little basic things. Like, so when she picked them up, there was one hippie guy and the daughter and the father, and I thought they're together. And they came out of a big bus, and they knew each other already. And I was like, they, I mean, how how would they know each other? I mean, you know what I mean? I mean, I didn't sense that much familiarity amongst them. I mean, just the fact that they were both going to do this thing. So they had that. Yeah, but they were like on a giant bus. How did they even like interact? Like, oh, you're going to this place too? I mean, Well, I'm guessing they had to board the bus first and they were probably standing at a bus stop or having rest areas, chit chat. This is, but so. then, this is that again. This is in the '90s before everyone I'm looking was for just weird... glued to their phone and being completely antisocial. Yeah, but still, I'm looking for weird things that I mean, bothered me. Not when like I was a kid, thing. I took a bus from Boston to Albany, and I talked to people on the bus. Uh, one time, I was on acid when I did it, <laughs> and a guy. Wow, you have a lot of on acid story this year. I don't think I do. It's just a this guy sat next to me, and uh, we were chitting and chatting, and I was trying to keep my shit together. And I asked him, uh, "Oh, what are you doing? What do you do for a living?" Because I'm, 
a teenager and I don't know how to make small talk besides asking what, do do what the weather, you know, hey, what do you do? And he's like, well, I was in the military. Oh, what, uh, what, what, what branch? Army. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. What did you do? He goes, well, there's some people in the army, they got specialties. Some people, they fix the tanks. Some people, they can, uh, you know, they're tactical. It was, let me guess. Can I guess? It was a comedian. No. Oh. He said, my specialty was killing people. Oh, my God. And, Sniper. And he said, I had Saddam Hussein in my sights, but he was not the target. Ah. And uh, That's cool. I don't really remember that much of the conversation after that. That's but, <laughs> yeah, he, uh, it was, good. yeah, it was cool to talk to people back. Well, I mean, you still can. That's the thing. Yeah. You no, just, I don't know. You corona. just have to be bold. You can still talk to people with Corona. Nah. All right. Stay away well, from me. You stay in the house. You <laughs> talk. Hello. What? Should we just stay at the house? You don't have to worry about talking at all. I know. I can so, talk online. There you with go. Screens. So leave I'm us kidding. a com leave us a conversation starter in the comments, and we'll just talk about something completely different. Um, so again, we saw that we said that two minutes in this truck just comes to life, adjusts its own mirror, kills a guy, and uh, the people <laughs> so dumb. are going about their day. This girl's going to pick up tourists. This uh, father Ray is trying to teach his son how to mine the gas station and do all this chores and shit. And uh, other trucks are starting up. Things are moving around. There's an asshole delivery guy that hits on Hope, who is uh, in his truck. He can't control it. So oh, we never counted his death. Well, did died. they ever did announce they? it? No, I don't yeah. think so. And so he, the truck locked him inside of it. He goes into in the back. He hears some rattling around in this refrigerated truck, and uh, the truck locks him inside, and then just drives around. And uh, starts causing chaos. And we don't see anything after that about him, so we're assuming that he did No, no. I think you hear a little banging at first, and you assume that he froze to death. <laughs> so. oh, okay. Yeah, it was a refrigerated one. Yeah, underrated casualty of the film. Uh, but so it's mostly, it, it focuses on... Um, Hope. It started to, but then I feel like it focused more on Ray, uh, because Hope seems to be the main character she picks up this father-son duo it's super messy and and there are abby. many characters fad sorry fad and abby i mean there's a there's a it's a there's a core of characters there's a father and son excuse me father and daughter and uh the daughter's a teenager the dad is ex-military he used to work at area 51 and the hippie guy and hope so that's the tour guide and her three guests and then, and then she was like supposed two. to be two yuppies that showed up already in the town, but they never really connect with Abby and excuse me, Abby, Ted, and who's the hippie guy's name? I don't remember. Not Hope. No. What's the opposite of Hope? Despair. Despair. Yeah, and there's some redneck dudes that are at the bar. He sacrificed Bob himself Pete. for the little girl. Uh, Abby. Yeah. What a sweetheart. But uh, eventually they almost die in a car accident with the trucks. And they call the police and they call Ray and he comes to get them. And it brings them back to the gas station. And all of a sudden they're being circled by trucks. And at this point I was thinking, oh shit, this is a maximum overdrive redo what was your favorite scene we're not gonna tell all the movies no i don't want to no no but like i'm just setting it up like they're all stuck in this little rest area with trucks circling them with bad intentions yeah honking their horns <laughs> revving their engines what uh, was your favorite part of the movie um my favorite part was probably because it, it played it much more serious than maximum overdrive and uh and it just seemed extremely silly when the trucks were just honking their horns and flashing their lights 
and the people are like, oh, they're talking to each other, and they want yeah. gas. <laughs> they they want gas. And yeah, and the guy who owns like the gas station is like a leader. Everything. He's like the only one they don't kill or they don't try to kill. You know what was my my favorite? The end. The n- no, the subtitles like don't sub subtitles. <laughs> The credits. the credits. No, I'm kidding. No, the because also it didn't give anything to the plot and to the story, so I thought it's ridiculous. And also, the scene itself was the most ridiculous scene in the movie with the mailman that wasn't even close to the rest stop. The mailman just went to drop some mail into the toy store that was closed, and the truck from. The <laughs> Oh, the the uh, toy truck? <laughs> yeah, the toy truck. That I had that toy when I was a kid, but without, like, motor. Mo- yeah, motor. you just motor? had, like, a little without dump mo- truck. Motor? Yeah, it was a remote control. Yeah, so mine didn't have a remote control, but it was the same exact track. And I'm wondering why it was Tomboy. So there you go. The truck I had a truck. Kills My the parents mailman. got me a truck. Yeah. yeah, and then the truck, the little truck killed the mailman which i have to admit this truck is kind of like scary it's pretty big and it's like all metal and it's heavy yeah i love this truck if i was a mailman i would be on the lookout for that truck almost at all times yeah if you're forget about vicious dogs if you're a mailman that's listening to us right now Hi. There could be a haunted truck yeah. that may be controlled by alien waves. That part's never really be careful. clear. Be careful. There's some yeah. speculation. Yeah, nothing was clear, and the end wasn't clear, and in the middle of the oh, movie, yeah. nothing was clear. I think the end <laughs> seems pretty clear. What? That's it? It's the end of well, the world? Well, just walk. Just walk us through the ending. So the end, most of the people are dead already. And they're trying to make it the father, the son, and the Holy Ghost, and hope, and, and the Hopi Ghost, and the father, and the father and the daughter. So yeah. they're trying to survive. So the father and the daughter are going to get a helicopter. Yeah, they take off on a motorcycle. <laughs> this movie is so stupid. No one has Well, the father long. was a pilot. He did fly it doesn't helicopters. Doesn't matter. It's still like it sounds like. Well, he flew helicopters out of Area Fifty One. So they went to get a helicopter (laughs) and while they were waiting to go meet them and they did, they saw the helicopter and when they went in, they saw that the... They got up in the sky, they were thankful that they got away from these I already said that the helicopter is like controlling itself for sure and if not, it's weird. And... And you were right, although I don't remember you saying that to me at all. You just said, you were asleep. Yeah, I was awake for the end. No, you you rewinded. No, I was awake for the end. I rewound it before that because I didn't know what happened to the dad when he no, took off on the motorcycle. No, it ended, and I told you, you didn't see what happened, and you Whatever. rewinded. Okay, so what did you tell my asleep body? What was going on? I don't see if you're asleep all the time. It's Talking all the time. You, you are know that. talking all the time. It's my <laughs> least favorite part about watching movies with you. Um, we can watch like you in the room and I'm here. Okay. I'll FaceTime you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll message you. We'll do it on Zoom. <laughs> yeah, so that, I like that This is the end. movie. Yeah, I like the idea of the movie ending. I can't wait for the sequel, Helicopters. <laughs> <laughs> I would watch it's the like movie version of Full Throttle. Up. I think that... For a throttle. Yeah, that's a short story you should throttle. read next. Throttle? Full throttle. 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 Yeah, exactly oh right. Oh, God. Perfect pronunci- pronunci- pronunciation. Pronunciation. Yala, okay, I must speak. Enough. <laughs> Thank right. you so much for listening. It's we almost over. we got a over. couple more left. Hopefully you got Stay your costume us. already. I'm Yael Gavish, this is Metkona, Shelly is asleep, luckily, and you are you, thank you for being you. Bye.